Hey guys, and welcome to another new episode here at Tours to Local. For those of you guys who are new here, my name is Juliana, and this channel is all about giving you guys city guides, travel tips, product reviews, and more. Today I'm gonna to be telling you guys a little bit more about how to work on a cruise ship. Last week I published about how to determine which cruise line is best for you, and the week before I showed my packing list of what I packed for six months of working on a cruise ship. But today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a little bit about how to write your cover letter and resume. This is such an important part because this is what's going to set you apart from the rest. When people submit their resumes and cover letters for cruise lines, they don't know that it is a lot different than submitting a cover letter or resume for the real world. Um, they just look for different things and I learned through trial and error what works and what doesn't. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a couple of tips. First thing before you even begin the application process, you need to ask yourself a couple of questions of if you even qualify. Number one, do you have a clear criminal background? <laughs> Basically, they want to know that you are a good person. Any minor like traffic tickets obviously don't matter, but if you went to jail, this probably isn't gonna work out for you, unfortunately. Um, so having a clear criminal background is 100% essential because you are working in foreign waters. Make sure that you have a valid passport that lasts uh, one and a half years after the time you apply to work on a cruise ship. You need to make sure that it has that extended amount of time so that if you do get hired, they can send you right away and then they don't have to worry about your passport expiring. Also, are you in good health? For example, if you have a broken leg or if you have an operation coming up, um, if you have any major health issues that would prohibit you from working on a ship, um, it's not they're not going to be able to hire you since later on down the road you will have to take an extensive medical exam. Um, so make sure you're in good health. Also, do you have the ability to work the entire contract? There's no way you can go for a weekend to your friend's wedding or that you can just take time off um, for a surgery or for your mom's birthday or whatever. You have to be able to work an entire six months from the time you apply. It's very important you're flexible because cruise lines hire on a need basis. Once you start applying, it's very possible that you could be sent out in a couple of weeks after. Okay, so make sure your schedule is clear for when you're going to work on a cruise ship or else you might just lose the most amazing opportunity that's presented to you. And lastly, make sure you have some knowledge of the English language, which you should if you're listening to this video um, and you understand like 50% of what I'm saying, I'm sure you'll be okay. Some positions don't even require that you speak English all the time. However, just having a basic knowledge, being able to communicate is essential. Next, moving on into the resume. This resume is gonna be unlike anything you have ever used for any other job. First, I want you to start off, um, since we talked about which lines you wanna work for, which positions, go ahead and write yourself a list of lines that you would be interested in working for. Next, what you're gonna do is you're going to go to the website of all those lines and take extensive notes about their mission statement um, and just what they look for in an employee, just how the employees seem to present themselves, how the brand is marketing themselves. Are they luxury? Are they about personalized experience? Um, are they about fun? Like what is this company all about? Make a couple of notes, keywords that you see on the website and keep that to the side. This also shows that you've taken the time to research each company. Um, each resume that you do write should be different. You shouldn't be sending out a carbon copy to every line. For that reason, it might be better off just for your own sake. Don't apply for any more than three lines at a time so you can keep it all straight in your head and really be focused. Next, we're gonna get into writing your resume. There should be a couple of different spots on your resume. Okay, so I have my resume right here with me. I'm gonna read it off to you guys so you know a little bit about how I applied. So starting off, the very top, I'm not gonna show you guys this because I don't want y'all to know my personal information, um, but I had my name followed by my address, my telephone number, and my email. That was just in the header right in the middle. Next, I had a one line objective. In this objective part, you're telling the reader what is the position you're applying for and just like a little bit about yourself. I know it's kind of hard to describe, um, but I said objective to join blank cruise lines as a cheerful fun-loving entertainment staff Okay, really simple. Just I said I want to join your company as a Couple of adjectives and then my position. Okay next moving into my profile. This is one two three four five lines It's a short little paragraph just giving them 
a sneak peek. Imagine that you're writing a book about yourself and this is what is in like that about the author section. So I said, profile. A professional and personable undergraduate student with a strong background in communicating with different cultures, living abroad, and emceeing. She, si she shines when adapting to fast-paced environments that allow her to quickly develop rapport with clients and staff. She's a strong believer that a positive attitude, patience, and quick problem-solving skills are the keys to a company's overall success. All right, so that was a lot of adjectives. Basically, you're gonna be wanting to talk about your work ethic, um, the qualities that make you who you are, but also kind of spinning it on basically just regurgitating the company's website to them. Okay, so you're trying to show I have, your company is all about these qualities and I have all those qualities. This is what you're looking for and guess what? I have all that. Basically, you're telling them why you're a good fit for the job um, and your work experience is gonna go into more detail to prove it. Next section, I said professional experience. You could also call this work experience. I listed three relevant positions that I had that, um, I mean, I've had so many positions. I remember that when I was applying to this job, I had like seven that I wanted to list because I was like, oh, this is so great and this could also work and whatever, but just cut it down to three or four relevant, the biggest things that you want to talk about. Um, and that should be enough, okay? And make sure that at least one of the jobs is one that you've been there the longest with, because um, that shows that you're kind of dedicated to sticking with a company. In this section, you want to highlight that you have worked with diverse groups of people, that you have attention to detail, that you can do customer service, and most importantly, that you work well under pressure. This section should all kind of wrap around and bring that all together in the way that you word things. And I'll show you guys a couple examples. I had a position at my school where I called alumni and asked for money. I was only there for a couple of months. However, I, I said I had five bullet points um, and this is what I said. I built rapport with potential donors to ensure engagement with the university. I acted as a public relations specialist in the case of dissatisfaction with the university. These are all things that were very, that, that one I just mentioned was a very small part of my job. However, I mentioned it because it showed, hey, if I talk to someone who's upset about our university and the way things were going, I pass it on to someone who could help. Um, I also talked about how I acknowledged refusals and gave objections for the reasons to give. I contacted approximately 80 to 100 alumni each week um, and asked for donations. And also I maintained a 50% participation rate and received $5,000 worth of donations. So I gave specific numbers. $5,000 in the area I was working in was not a lot, but on paper, it sounds really cool. So just use those numbers to your advantage. Um, the next one was I worked in a hostel as a volunteer. This wasn't even a paid position. It was something I did for like a month or two months just while I was traveling with uh, workaway.info if you want to use them. Um, and this is what I said about it. This was like a very low key job, like the chillest job ever. Basically, I worked an hour or two a day at the front desk and just relaxed the rest of the day. Um, but here's what I said interacted with international guests at the front desk of the hostel in Quito, Ecuador, which served 154 guests a week, spent free time interacting with guests to ensure they were enjoying their stay and were aware of hotel hostel's amenities. Basically with that one, I just talked to people and made friends, but I turned it into something that sounded a lot nicer, right? Um, responsible for handling check-ins, resolution of guest requests and complaints, providing city information, promoting tour sales, and managing the complimentary breakfast station. So I showed I had a lot of responsibility, worked with diverse people, and best of all, I had an international experience. That's huge when you're working on a ship. And then my last one was that I worked in my school's cafeteria, okay? This is like the least glamorous job in the world. I basically just served potatoes and like macaroni every day, but I made it sound really cool, okay? It said, received award for exceptional service of the month during first month of employment. Boom, get it girl. I prepped and served food at university. I prepped and served food at the university cafeteria and bust tables. 
Now this next section is hosting and related experience. If you're not applying for an MC like entertainment position, just call it related experience. This is just as important of section as your work experience. This is all the other stuff that basically you weren't getting paid for or you weren't technically hired by someone as like maybe a one-time event or like it just shows that hey there's all this other stuff that makes me a great candidate. This section is very important. This is going to be the conversation starter for your interviewer, okay? You should have like five bullet points. Looking back at my resume, I added too much, um, but I was really trying to show that I had experience. Um, I had like public speaking experience that wasn't shown in my work experience area, okay? First, emceeing experience for six local car shows and talent shows. Basically, when I was in college and high school, I was given the opportunity to do, do some hosting stuff. It was very low key, not paid, like really small events, probably like 100 people, maybe less. Um, but they don't need to know that. I said emceeing experience for six local car shows and talent shows. It's true and it shows that I can speak in front of a crowd. Next, creator and writer of TourstoLocal.com, a travel blog promoting cultural awareness by offering travel tips, videos, and city itineraries to budget travelers. This is back when I had a blog running along with this account, which I should probably get up, but it's like really hard. Anyway, that's another story. Um, but yeah, so I talked about how I had, you know, I'm really all about traveling. I clearly have a passion for it. Therefore, the idea of being gone for six months isn't a big deal to me. Next. Uh, multimedia production and website design. I shouldn't have included that looking back. Um, World Travel has traveled to 13 countries, five of which were solo travel. That bullet point is a definite must when you're applying for a cruise line. Show that you have traveled, especially if you've traveled solo, that's awesome. That shows that they don't have, you won't have any hesitation about hiring me because I have experience being away from home. Next. I said, um, this is for entertainment once again, 16 years of training for tap dancing and 10 years in jazz, hip hop, and ballet. That's important so that they know that you're coordinated. <laughs> or not coordinated, but like they know that you have like show experience um, and, and can be in front of an audience. Uh, addition to that, dancer and actor in 23 community theater productions, also showing up on stage presence. Um, <laughs> this next one, other hobbies including crafting and line dancing. I included that for, once again this is specifically for entertainment because oftentimes entertainment hosts have to host their own activities, like make up their own activities on the ship so I show like I have a little bit of depth to me that I could supply those types of activities if needed. And lastly, conversation partner for the ESL students at my university for two years, showing that I can work with international people, it's not a problem to me. Um, in this section, you might want to also list any sports or any hobbies because I found that in any interview you do, whether it's for cruise ships or whatever, just listing a hobby could be an instant instant win for you, basically. Like, say you list that you love fishing, and the interviewer loves fishing and then you get into this great conversation about fishing and your personality really shines through always list stuff like that just fun facts it's like a really good tip you guys so definitely list a couple of fun things in there that's why i listed crafting and line dancing okay uh, and then lastly last section is called personal information i gave my citizenship i'm a united states citizenship next bullet point was my date of birth um, because they will need to know this stuff at some point, so you might as well give it to them. And lastly, your marital status. Okay, that is the resume. Now for listing languages, um, it's very important that you also list the level you're at. If you're proficient, you know, beginner, advanced, bilingual, um, fluent, you know. So just make sure you list those levels. That was a major game changer for me when they saw I spoke Spanish. I swear that was the reason I got this job because a lot of hosts, no hosts actually where I got put, spoke Spanish so they needed someone who spoke Spanish and that was also the reason I had such great freedom going into my next contract being able to pick a ship based out of San Juan Puerto Rico so definitely include those languages guys don't let those go to waste next moving on into the cover letter now my um, company I applied for didn't require a cover letter um, but I applied to two companies at the time the second one was Disney Cruise Lines uh, so this was the cover letter I sent them. I'm going to read it to you guys real quick. First off, you're going to find a direct contact, if at all possible, an exact name of the HR person that you are going to send this to, okay? So if you can't do that, just send it to their general HR people. 
Um, first line is going to be an opener that grabs their attention and sets you apart from the rest. Uh, so for me, that was, your line needs a bubbly entertainment host that can put smiles on people's faces. Simple, they're like, oh yeah, our line does need that. Think about what their line needs, basically you're saying that you are that. Next, you're gonna introduce yourself and say which position you are applying for and the name of their line. So I said, hello, my name is Juliana Blank and I'm interested in applying for an entertainment staff position with Disney Cruise Lines. All right, next you're gonna move into reasons that the company needs to hire you, reasons they need you. So I said, below I've outlined four reasons that make me a top candidate for this position. And then I used four bullet points. Um, here is where you're going to be basically taking those same list of qualities that you found on their website and just rewriting it and saying that you're that, okay? So I said, my success lies in my sunny disposition and passion for making everyone feel included, making people smile is what keeps me going. Second one, I have been nationally recognized for public speaking and am comfortable with thinking on the spot and ensuring seamless transitions. Next, I pride myself on offering personalized attention to build customer rapport and prove exceptional customer service. And lastly, I have lived in multicultural environments and tight quarters for extended periods of time and am experienced in taking leadership among diverse groups of people. In your next paragraph, you're gonna give any travel experience or work experience that supports those statements you just said. So with that, I said, I have had experience working and traveling abroad in Chile, Mexico, and Ecuador, but I've also showcased my love for international culture in my very own country. As a student at Blank University, I was involved with planning events for international students and participating in weekly conversation circles. I've also spent time in the spotlight from emceeing local events as Miss California in 2014 to creating my own YouTube channel to share my passion for travel with others. And then your last paragraph is gonna be ask, making a call to action, saying, hey, I wanna have an interview. Um, if you have any more questions, contact me at this. Um, and just like showing how excited you are to work for this cruise line. So I said, Disney's extraordinary ships, exceptional guest services, and outstanding crew members are what creates such memorable family vacations. So basically, in that first sentence, just saying, just restating their mission statement. Okay. Um, to work for Disney Cruise Lines, a recognized leader in family cruising would be a dream come true. I'm currently finishing my degree and would be ready to set sail on one of your four majestic cruises in May. Also showing that you know how many are in the line. Um, really showcase that you know this brand. I have also attached my resume to this email. I would love to set up an interview to discuss how I can benefit Disney Cruise Lines. I can be reached by email or my cell phone. Blank. Um, list that. And then your last sentence before signing off should be just thanking them for their time and telling them you can't wait to hear from them soon. So I said thank you again for taking the time to read this email. I am thrilled by the opportunity of working with you. Best regards, my name, okay? So that is the cover letters and resumes. Once you have all that stuff together, you're going to start applying. If you wanna know who to send these emails to, um, Wandering Earl made an amazing guide. I'm not sponsored. I just read it and like really loved it and how helpful it was. He made a guide of all, I mean, there's just so much information in there about the various lines, what their benefits are and whatever, uh, but also of all the addresses and emails to get a hold of these people at these cruise line companies. So it's definitely worth looking into. I'll leave a link down below. Um, so basically what you're gonna do next is you send those emails off or send a physical copy as well, that would be an amazing thing to do, send a physical copy to their address. That's gonna get you noticed for sure. Um, keep in mind that they do get a lot of applications, so you wanna stand out and it might take a while to hear back from them. So about three to four days after you send out that application, if you haven't heard anything, send an email to the HR person saying, hey, I sent you my application a couple days ago. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, and if they don't reply to you within two weeks of that, follow up with a phone call. That'll make an impression and just say, hey, I sent my application in two weeks ago. I wanna make sure that it was received okay. Wait to hear from them um, and then see what happens from there. And if they still don't um, respond, don't give up. Don't give up. They wanna see you persevere and show that you want this job so bad. So do that same process again. Send another email, make another phone call. You need to hustle to get your dreams. That's what's gonna get you this job, guys. So don't give up. Okay, they wanna see you persevere. Keep contacting them, pester them. I know it's uncomfortable to send those emails a million times and not get replied to. Pester them and just keep following up. 
um, they're probably busy and your emails might just get buried under all the other ones so just keep getting your name out there. Next week I'm going to be talking about the interview process and what happens after you're hired. Uh, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave any questions down below if I haven't answered them in my videos for you. Um, and good luck with all this applying, guys. I know you guys are going to do a great job and it is something totally attainable, so don't give up on your dreams, guys. Once you make it on that ship, you'll realize how worth it was and you'll be so proud that you fought to make your dreams come true. And of course, always subscribe for new videos every Monday and check out my channel for other content just about my travels and see um, what it was like to work on a cruise ship in action. I have a lot of vlogs and everything and I'll be going back in just a couple days so um, actually by the time this video is up I'll be there so anyway. As always make sure you keep the spirit of a tourist and the mind of a local whether you're on the road or in your very own hometown. I'll see you guys next week. Bye! <laughs>